Hello there, everybody. So today I'm going to be showing you guys how to create this super cool sort of spinning clay pot effect in Blender using only geometry nodes. So I'm in my scene here, and before we do anything, I want to set up my scene. And so I'm going to switch over to Cycles, GPU Compute if you have it, and lower our render samples to 128, adjust color management to medium high contrast, and we can jump over into our geometry nodes. And the first thing we're going to add in is a quadratic Bezier curve. Now we want to flatten this out so that it's a perfectly straight line. To do that, we'll just set the middle to zero. There we go. And then to create our pot, we're going to use a curve to mesh node plug in a curved circle into the actual geometry. And then we're going to use this quadratic Bezier as the profile curve. Now, as you can see here, we're just sort of getting a flat plane. So we need to actually transform this by rotating it along the Z axis. And so as you can see here, we'll set this to minus 90. So now, before we get into any of the actual sculpting, let's make this look actually more like a pot. To do that, we're going to bring in an extrude mesh node, uncheck individual, and then adjust this offset scale way down. In order to make sure we can control this from our interface over here, I'll take a slider and plug it in right there. And I'm going to add in a math node, divide, and divide it by 100. This just gives us a little bit more control over here so it's not super finicky. Now, the other problem you're going to notice is that this only extrudes inward. In order to take care of this, we can just duplicate this extrude mesh node, add in another math operation, set this to multiply, and multiply it by negative 1. Now, if we join our geometry, you can see we actually get something resembling a pot. Next, to take care of these really harsh edges, I'm going to bring in a subdivision surface node and set our levels to 2. And now you can see we actually have the basis of our clay mesh. Now we can move on to actually making it look like it's being sculpted. In order to do this, Let's add in a set position node for our quadratic bezier. And let's bring in a noise texture. If we add in a vector math node, bring that over here, and set this to multiply, and only allow it to be shifted on the y axis, and then plug that into the offset, you'll see we actually get this sort of sculpted effect. Now we want to lower the scale by a whole lot, bringing it down something maybe like a 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Seems pretty good. And then you'll also notice our pot is very, very big right now. So I'm actually going to lower our thickness a bit. And I'm going to come up here to our curved circle and lower our radius way down, something like 0 0.01. Because we want the offset of our Bezier curve to be the thing that actually determines the radius of our pot. And so if we increase the radius of our curved circle, we're just adding that value to the radius of our pot. And so we don't want to do that. We just want it all controlled by this noise texture here. Now to make this actually evolve with the scene, we can add in a scene time node, switch our noise texture to four dimensional, and plug the frame value into our W. Now if we click play, you'll see it's evolving, but it's moving way too fast. So what we're going to do is add in a math node, set it to divide, and bring this up. Something like 35. Maybe that does it. Yeah, that looks pretty good to me. But we can also make this adjustable from our interface by just plugging it in here. Now, I want the actual change to be a little bit more extreme, so I'm going to bring in a color ramp bring up our blacks here a little bit, bring the whites down, and that'll just make it a little bit more extreme. There we go. Another thing you can adjust is the roughness value on your noise. See, if you increase the roughness, you get more definition, 
lower it, it becomes a much smoother object. So I like something around 0.3. I think that's a really good amount. Now, the next thing I want to do is I actually want to transform this and move it one meter up on the z-axis. So that way the bottom of our pot is at the world origin. There we go. Now the next thing you'll notice is that our pot isn't actually shrinking. So whenever it gets wider, we also want it to get shorter. In order to do this, let's bring in a trim curve node. Add that in here. And as you can see, if we adjust the end value here, it'll actually make our pot shorter the shorter it gets. And so we can use the data we're getting from our noise texture that we're using for the offset in order to adjust how much we should trim the curve. To do this, let's bring in a math node and we'll switch this to subtract and we'll subtract this value from one. That's better, but it's still not quite as good. We want it to be more extreme in its shift. Now, if we multiply this value by pi, we get a pretty realistic result. The next thing you'll see is you'll see there's this sort of clipping and jumping happening at the top edge. If we bring in a resample curve node and set it to length, that'll get rid of this problem for the most part. What we're doing is we're just adding resolution adaptively so that at no point is it jumping between extra vertices that it's getting from our profile curve. That looks pretty good for our pot. And so the thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to group this, highlight it all, control G to group. We'll come down here and we'll rename this node group to pot. The next thing we want to do is we want to create the actual machine and make it look like it's sculpting our pot. In order to do this, we're going to have to create a separate object. So bring in a cube, add a geometry node modifier, and add a new geometry node tree. We'll come into here and we're actually going to bring in our pot node group because we're going to need the actual mesh information in order to make our machine look like it's actually sculpting. The most important thing for this though is we need these values to be set the same on both objects. It's easier just to set these to rounded values, so I'm going to set them to 6 and 35 respectively. The other thing we want to take care of is we want our machine to make look like it's sculpting an entire pot and not just have the pistons shooting all the way inward whenever they're above the pot. In order to do this, we're going to need to actually export two groups of geometry. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to take everything we have after our trim curve node, control shift D to duplicate while keeping everything connected. And what we're going to do is we're just going to plug in the geometry from our set position node directly into this resample curve node. Now we'll take our geometry, plug it into a new socket here, and there we go. Now that we have this untrimmed curve geometry, let's bring in a ray cast node. We'll plug this geometry into the target geometry, and we'll bring in a mesh line. Bring in a set position node, and plug our mesh line into the geometry. For our ray cast node, we want to shoot a ray along the y-axis and figure out where it hits. In order to do this, set z to 0 and set y to 1 on your ray cast node. Then we can plug the hit position into the offset for our set position. If we plug in this geometry, you'll see we get a sort of curve, but it's also being cut off here at the top. We also want to make sure that the ray cast node is only affecting our position on the x and y axes. To do this, we'll just multiply by 1 on x and y and 0 on the z-axis. Now, our mesh line is clearly way too tall. Let's set our mesh line to endpoints, and then we can adjust our start and end locations on the z-axis. Remember, this is actually supposed to be 2 meters tall at the max, and so in order to take care of this, let's set this to 1.99. I won't set it quite to 2 as whenever you have two values that are exactly equal, it can sort of create some weird effects because the ray cast will sometimes clip right over it. In order to take care of that, just set this to 1.99 and we'll have no problems and it looks exactly the same. The next thing you'll notice is we actually have this issue where 
the ray cast is only hitting the inside edge of our pot. In order to fix this, let's come down here, and for our second geometry export, let's only plug in the bottom extrude mesh into our subdivision surface. This way, only the outside mesh exists, and that's what the ray cast node will have to hit. We can also adjust the resolution of our mesh line here, set it to something really high, like 68. Now you'll see another issue in that our bottom is actually clipping in here. In order to do that, we can do the same thing we did with the end location and set this to 0 0.001 on the start. I might actually set it just slightly higher as realistically the profile curve won't actually hit the very bottom. Now that we have this, let's bring in our mesh to curve node and then bring in our curve to mesh. Then we can use a basic curve circle as our profile in order to give this some sort of depth. Lower the radius by a whole heck of a lot, and there you go. We'll also have to offset this just a little bit. And I'm also going to adjust our start location just a touch more and pull down our end just a touch. There we go. Now that we've got that, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to bring in a second mesh line. Set the count on this to something low, like 6, because it'll determine the number of pistons you actually have. Next, we can bring down our set position setup and plug our new mesh line into it. Bring in an instance on points node and plug our geometry into the points. To create our actual piston object, I'm going to actually bring in a curve line and a curve circle, and then convert our curve to mesh. Now I'll bring this in, lower this radius way down, and we can plug this into the instance node. Now if we add in a joint geometry, we can plug this in, and you'll see we actually have our pistons. We'll also rotate them a little bit, just on the x-axis, and we'll offset them a tad. And there we go. If you press play, you can see our curve fits very nicely against our pot. And if we want to add spheres here at the end to sort of make it look like there's a little coupling, we can just bring in a UV sphere and join that to our mock cylinder here. The reason I didn't actually use a cylinder object is because cylinders don't really shade smooth well unless you add a lot of geometry lengthwise, whereas this will shade perfectly fine. We'll reduce the radius of our UV spheres. And I'm going to just transform them a tiny bit on the Y axis. the last bit here, I'm going to add in a shade smooth node. And then I'm actually going to come back here into layout and I'm going to model a very simple piston and body so that we can have something for these tubes to slide into. And I'll come back into our apparatus here. And I'm going to create another instance on points node. But this time I don't want it actually to get distorted. In order to do this, I'm going to take our mesh line and just plug it directly into an instance on points node. Then grab an object info node 
and we can click on our cylinder. We'll have to adjust the scale a little bit. And like with our piston cylinders, we're going to have to adjust the rotation as well. Add in another transform node. And then we just have to fine tune our scaling. Then we can do a quick check to make sure that at no point does it actually clip inside of our cylinder and make sure that it doesn't slide out. I'll actually bring this a little bit closer in and I think that looks pretty good. Then we can just add a simple mirror modifier, switch it to the Y axis and make sure that we realize all our instances so that it'll mirror all of these objects as well. The rest is just adding in some very basic shapes to make it look like our machine is more of, well, a machine. And adding in some simple lighting, a little bit of a stage. And there you go. And with that all made, the final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create an empty you make a sphere and I'm going to use this as our rotation parent for both our pot and our table down here. Now you'll see if I rotate the empty, it also rotates our pot. We'll set a keyframe at zero, and then we'll jump to our last frame, and we'll set the rotation to something super duper extreme, several thousand degrees for 250 frames. And then the next thing we have to do is check interpolation mode to linear for our rotation. And then the final thing we'll wanna add is we'll come down here and we'll check motion blur on for our scene. We can lower our shutter by a little bit to something like 0.4 and then if we click render render image you'll see we get this very nice motion blur down here that completely sells the spinning effect and that's it for this video if you guys like this a lot you can check out the project file on gumroad it's for one dollar and it gives you all the materials the entire scene setup and everything you've seen in this video i hope you guys enjoyed this Thank you for watching and have a great day.